Welcome to Mark Gibson's Human Risk Channel. Accountant with the Simation CPA, MBA, CMA, ACPA, ASA, Australia. Enjoy learning! Okay, so class, once again, welcome to your financial manage management class. Today, we'll discuss about capital budgeting. Um, before we proceed with the discussion proper, let me share with you a short clip. No? So here's the video. Back in 2003, Dubai announced it was commencing construction of a multi-billion dollar project named The World. This man-made archipelago was supposed to consist of islands imitating countries and containing luxurious tourist resorts and private homes. But today, 17 years later, the project remains incomplete, begging the questions, what went wrong? Why? And will they ever finish it? No, before you go! In early 2000, Dubai was booming. Real estate prices were sky high and demand for ocean properties massive. Real estate developer Nikhil came up with various projects including three different palm tree islands. Palm Jumaraya, Palm Dira, and Palm Jebel Ali. And of course, the world. In addition, there were future plans to add the universe, which would include the sun, the moon, other planets, the Milky Way, and a distant galaxy. There were also plans to build the Dubai Waterfront, a massive island complex designed to protect Palm Jebel Ali from erosion. So with such a bright future ahead, why did everything just stop? Well, Dubai's economy relies heavily on crude oil. While the 2008 world financial crisis didn't affect them directly, it did affect them indirectly. Oil prices plummeted, as did real estate demand and construction companies started going bust. John O'Dolan, who bought the island of Ireland for 25 million pounds, committed suicide. Safi Kwarashi, who bought Britain, was sent to prison for bouncing checks. And in 2009, Nikhil had to be bailed out of a $25 billion debt. The Palm Jebel Ali project came to a standstill. And in 2011, Nikhil offered investors <laughs> refunds. The Dubai Waterfront project has also been discontinued. And Palm Dira has been downsized and rebranded as Dira Islands. The world has larger problems, with investors having pulled out and the man-made islands eroding back into the sea. People are worried about how rising sea levels will affect it and also how the dredging and disruption of the seabed may affect the ecosystem. Existing residents of Palm Jumaraya have begun complaining about water quality <sighs> as the breakwater barrier not only stops erosion but also stops the natural <laughs> tidal movement, causing the water inside Palm Jumaraya to become stagnant. All these problems have caused a lack of faith in the feasibility of the project. In 2014, an Australian real estate developer announced the European Islands project to be opened in 2020. Although COVID-19 has delayed this, Phase 1 is is still planned to open in 2020 and will consist of Sweden, beach palaces, Germany, villas, honeymoon island, Porto Fino hotel and Cote d'Azur resort. Whether this is a spark to relight the project's fire or its final fizzling out, only time will tell. If you enjoyed this video, give us a like and subscribe. So, ano kaya yung relevance ng video na yun sa topic natin for today? No? So, today we'll discuss about capital budgeting. So it is the process of identifying, evaluating, planning, and financing capital investment projects of an organization. So class, um, uh, in the video, it's actually a capital investment project no? by Nakil. Nakil is a government-owned corporation. No? It's owned by the by Dubai cor Dubai government. No, so. Uh, what are the characteristics of capital investment decisions? So number one, capital investment decisions usually require large commitments of resources. So imagine that project by the uh, Dubai government. So it requires large commitments of resources from the Dubai uh, government. No? So imagine how massive and huge that project is. And then... Um, and yet, uh, they they were not able to sustain it. And in fact, they um, 
they decided to downgrade it no from uh, being premier to simply simply islands no number two most capital investment decisions involve long term commitments no so time flies and yet the uh, the project that um, initiated by Dubai government hasn't been uh, launched yet no so in fact uh, uh, they started construct they started constructing it in in early 2000 and uh, we're in 2021 no and, and pandemic happened still they haven't launched it fully no so number 3 capital investment decisions are more difficult to reverse than short term decisions so imagine no? Uh, hindi siya basta-basta reversible. So meaning, uh, hindi mo pwedeng dahil ayaw mo na, eh, stop na. No? Kasi nga, there are already investments, huge investments involved. No? And number four, capital investment decisions involve so much risk and uncertainty. So that's that's very true with the uh, video that I, I shared with you. So there's risk and uncertainty involved. So imagine, Dubai, as the video mentioned, isn't um, so it, it wasn't really directly impacted by the global financial crisis, and yet it was indirectly impacted, no, because of uh, the the, uh, the other industries um, being supplied with petrol uh, collapsed at the time, no. So I hope, no. Uh, by showing you that video, you were able to feel or appreciate uh, in, in glance no, what capital budgeting is. All right. So in capital in capital budgeting, we have uh, three factors, or so we call it capital investment factors. So number one, we have the net investment, or this is the cost or cash outflows, less cash inflows or savings incidental to the acquisition of the investment project. Number two, we have the accounting net income. Well, uh, when we say accounting net income, it's simply your uh, income as reported in your um, financial statement, or specifically in your net, uh, I mean, in your income statement. And then, of course, number two, net cash inflows. And so during our discussion on um, statement of cash flows, so we say that net cash inflows only include cash movements no so um uh, in 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 simple terms no when we say counting net income all we have to do is adjust it add back all the um elements without cash movements so for example uh depreciation so we know that depreciation decrease the taxable income and yet uh also it it decreases the net income but then there's no there's really no cash um, involved no kasi diba uh, we recognize depreciation but in, in essence we're not, we're not paying for that expense you know? so and I'm, I'm very sure na at this stage uh, you already know what i mean with net cash inflows no if not you can always refer back to our discussion on the statement of cash flow so number 3 we have the cost of capital the cost of using funds, it is also called hurdle rate, required rate of return, cut off rate, opportunity cost of capital. And now, class, the reason why I provided here the other terminologies to denote cost of capital is that um, different problems sometimes use these terminologies. No? So, might as well as early as now, you're, you get familiar with this uh, different. Um, naming convention for cost of capital no? so the weighted average rate of return the company must pay, must pay to its long-term creditors and share shareholders for the use of their funds no? of course that's uh, um in funding a project naman you have uh, basically two options and number one you finance it by getting money from third party by uh, uh, long-term creditors or issue shares no additional shares so so by the way of uh, shareholders for the use of their funds no? so the approach that we're going to uh, take for capital budgeting is every time i introduce a concept there will be uh, discussion problems so that um, you'll get to uh, 
uh, appreciate the concept more no so discuss natin yung theory and then diretso tayo sa problem no so let's start with the net investment so sabi natin kanina class ha? it is the cost or cash outflows less cash inflows or savings no? so paano ba yan Number one, the initial cash outlay covering all expenditures on the project up to the time when it is ready for use or operation. So, for example, purchase price of the asset, incidental project-related costs such as freight, insurance, and taxes, handling, installation, and test runs. No? So, number two, we have the working capital requirement to operate the project at desired level. And the number three, the market value of an existing, currently idle asset, which will be transferred to or utilized in the operations of the proposed capital investment project. Oh, sige, parang ganito yung class. No? So, for example, uh, you want to expand. No? So, of course, uh, uh, kung mag-expand tayo, we need to have building. So, it's a capital investment. Um lahat daw ng pagpapagawa ng, ng investment na yun will form part of your ca- cost or cash outflows. Now, uh, say for example, we have um, a machine in, in our old building. No? It's still working, pero hindi na siya ginagamit. That's why it's it's mentioned here, no? currently idle asset. Then, if we transfer it to the new building, then it will form part of the cost or cash outflows. No? So later on, we'll also... Uh, We'll have a problem for that. No? Next, uh, savings or cash inflows. So we have number one, trade-in value of old assets. So in case of replacements, so for example, um, ito madalas to sa kotse. No? So uh, ay, sabihin na lang natin na meron ka old model ng Honda Civic. No? So you want a, a, a brand new car. No? May nirelease kasi. Usually Honda releases... Uh, uh, new model no every year no so you wanted it to you want to re- swap parang ganun, no so you want to trade in your uh, asset no so again for the purposes of calculating your net investment that trade in value will form part of the savings or cash inflows no? so uh, ngayon nakikita ko advertisement yung ano eh, yung sa Samsung yung flip nila back uh, back in the days, meron na talaga yung flip phone eh. Ngayon, binabalik na naman nila. Uh, pero syempre, mas high-tech na ngayon with, uh, with, this, with all the smartphones and, and, and Android. So, yun din. Ang advertisement nila is um, if you trade in your old Samsung phone, uh, parang lalagyan nila yun ng traded value, parang 20,000 yata. And then, you can deduct it from the price of the new handset, no? new mobile phone. So number two, proceeds from sale of old asset to be disposed due to the acquisition of the new project, less applicable tax in case there is there is gain on sale or add tax savings in case there is a loss on sale. Sige, pag-usapan naman natin to. So, ito naman yung class na uh, sabi natin, uh, instead of trading in, instead of re- replacing, no? ang uh, ang uh, ginawa natin, instead of trading in, imbis na mag-trade in ka, ang ginawa natin is binenta lang natin. So, kasi nasabi mo, uh, imbis na i-benta mo, i-trade in mo yung phone mo for 20,000, eh, alam mo naman ang value ng phone mo, eh, sabi natin na mas mataas pa doon sa 20,000 na trade in value. So you decided to sell it. no? Ngayon, pag binenta mo yun, ang sabi dito, yung proceeds will form part of the savings or cash inflows provided you have to deduct the applicable tax. O bakit? Bakit dinededuct yung tax? Kasi if it's a gain, tandaan na yung gain on sale um, increases your net income. No? While, when it's a loss, it, it decreases your uh, net income. So therefore, the tax portion will have to be adjusted. No? Later, uh, we'll also cover that in a sample problem. Number three, avoidable cost of immediate repairs on old asset to be replaced net of tax. So, i- ibig sabihin ulit, pag sinabing net of tax, you have to consider the tax portion. Now, class, ang tandaan dito sa number three, sabi dito, avoidable cost. Meaning, if you purchase a new machine, you can avoid 
these immediate repairs on old asset. And that's why it's part of the savings or cash inflows. In fact, um, to um, illustrate those concepts on net investment, let's have this cash on problem one. No? Let me read the requirements. Number one, compute the amount of net investment for decision-making purposes. Take note, class, that uh, what we're discussing in capital budgeting is really not, um, not the concept of financial accounting and reporting. This is different because uh, in capital budgeting, this is used as a tool uh, to better understand the alternatives for you to decide. No? Uh, and uh, as you know, financial accounting and reporting follows different accounting standards. No, so don't don't confuse yourselves. Um, uh, especially, for example, no, when you go to property, plant, and equipment in your financial accounting and reporting, baka sabi nyo dun, ah, na discuss tam sa capital budgeting hindi rin yan. So tandaan class, um, capital budgeting basically is that this is management accounting. Uh, it doesn't follow, does it, it's not required to follow uh, different accounting policies and, or generally accepted accounting principle. Okay, so number two, assume that instead of selling the old unit to be replaced, the same is traded in for 100000 Compute the amount of net investment for decision-making purposes. So class, uh, in this problem, actually, we already have... Um, we, we have two concepts, no? So number one is plain and simple net investment. And then number two, what if there's a trade-in involved, no? So let's uh, have problem one, okay? So as you can see, we have 18 sample problems, no? So please bear with me. Pero isa-isay natin yan para mas maging madali. Okay. So let me read the problem. Piolo companies planning to purchase a new equipment costing 1 million pesos. Freight and installation costs are 50,000 pesos. If the new machine is acquired, the company's working capital requirement will be reduced by 80,000. The new equipment will be purchased to replace an old unit that was what that was acquired three years ago at a cost of 300,000 pesos for which an annual depreciation expense of 30,000 pesos has been recorded. This old unit will be sold for 200,000 pesos. If the new equipment is not purchased, extensive repairs on the old equipment will have to be made and at, at an estimated cost of 60,000. Ito yung pinag-uusapan natin kanina class na avoidable immediate repairs. No? These repair expenses can be avoided ayun na nga, by purchasing the equipment. The company's income tax rate is 30%. O class, in, in solving problems uh, in both financial management and, account, and man, management accounting, uh, you actually don't really need to follow the tax rate prescribed by the Philippine laws. No? So all we have to do is just follow the tax rate provided in the problem. No? So say say natin dyan, uh, pag-usapan natin ngayon yung mga given and i-plot na rin natin sa uh, diretso dun sa uh, sa problem, na, dun sa template natin. Of course, we have the purchase cost of 1 million that's given. Freight and installation, sabi natin, this is part of cash outflow. Working capital, sabi dyan class, ha, take note, will be reduced by 80,000. No? So, if the new machine is acquired, the company's working capital will be reduced by 80,000. Okay? So, that's 80,000. And then, proceeds from sale of old unit, sabi kasi natin, di ba, proceeds will form part of your cash inflow. Dahil nga binenta mo, meron kang, dag, meron kang money na receive Alright? So, how much daw yung pagkakabenta? Proceeds is 200,000 pesos. Now, remember earlier, um, kailangan din natin pala tingnan yung tax effect 
nung uh, proceeds. No? So, how much is the proceeds? That's 200,000. Pero magkano lang yung book value? So, 300,000, that's the original cost. Less 90,000. 90,000 kasi 30,000 multiplied by 3. That it was because it was acquired three years ago. No? So we have accumulated depreciation of 90,000. So therefore, the book value of the equipment is 200,000, 210,000. So imagine, meron ka, binenta mo ng 200,000, ang book value is 210,000. So therefore, meron ka ngayon loss on retirement of 10,000 pesos. Kailangan ngayon natin yung 10,000 na yan kailangan natin kunin yung tax savings. Bakit, bakit tinawag na tax savings? So remember class, since this is loss, technically, pag nilagay natin sa income statement natin yan, it will decrease the taxable income. Pag nag-decrease ang taxable income, bababa syempre yung tax base mo. Pag bumaba yung tax base mo, mas liliit yung tax na babayaran mo. Tama ba yan? Okay, so in that case, we call it as tax savings due to loss. No? Paano natin kinompute yun? So, simply 10,000 multiplied by 30%. No? 30% being the income tax rate. Okay, so, okay na tayo dyan. Of course, avoidable cost of repair, sabi ulit, net of tax. So, how much is that? That's... Um, uh, 60,000 pesos multiply by 70%, no? Kaya natin ginawa 70% para shortcut na lang, no? Kasi instead of kunin mo pa yung 30%, then deduct it from 60,000, no? So, simply, uh, it's net of tax, no? So, inalis natin yung tax, yun lang yung nilagay natin, no? So, 42,000. So, 60,000 multiply by 30%, okay, para lang mas klaro. So, we have 60,000 30% yung tax. And then, 60,000 less the tax. So, that's 42,000. No? So, it's the same. Okay. So, uh, get the sum. Actually, the total net investment is 725,000 pesos. So, for decision-making purposes, the net investment is 725,000 pesos. So, class, ha, what if natuloy yung purchase? No? Kasi ito, remember, this is just an analysis, no? As, uh, a decision tool no? for, for us to say whether it's a go or a no-go. No? So, uh, basically, if it's a net investment concept or tool that we're using, ang pinag-uusapan natin dyan, if it's positive, then it's okay. No? Parang ganun, no? And of course, if it's just one project, and what if there are multiple projects? Of course, um, kung ganun na yung usapan, punta ka doon sa pinakamalaki. Ganun lang naman kasimple yan. No? Um, now, uh, in this case, no, sabi natin, net investment is 725,000. So what if, um, okay na, no? Nag okay si management, sige, let's push through with this project. Parang ganun. Eh, kung natuloy na yung project, question, how do we record our equipment? Is it at 725,000 or dun sa purchase cost? So, tandaan class, ulitin ko lang, um, this capital budgeting tools, this net investment that we just calculated, um, this doesn't require to follow generally accepted accounting principle. No, This is just a decision tool. So therefore, kung paano yung ituturo sa sa financial accounting and reporting, yun yung sundin mo to record the, uh, the asset. No? So that's another, another topic for another subject. Okay, so let's go to question number two. Requirement number two, assume that instead of selling, alisin ko muna to para at least meron tayong screen. Instead of selling, eh, nag-trade in na lang tayo. So, of course, we have the purchase cost. We have the freight and installation. And the working capital increase. No? So, okay pa rin tayo dyan. This time, tin-trade in natin. So, meaning, hindi natin binenta. No? Doon sa initial, initial uh, statement ng problem, eh, 
binenta natin. That's why meron tayong proceeds, no? So, this time, in number two, hindi daw binenta. So, tin rate in. So, magkano yung trade in value? 100,000. And of course, the avoidable cost of repairs, net of tax, is 42,000. So, the total net investment is 828,000. Okay? So, ganyan ka simple class, uh, concept of net investment, basically, um, you're just getting all the total cash outflow and usually naman, pag cash outflow, ito yung cost ng investment. No? Less the cash inflow. And usually, the cash inflows would be the proceeds from sale of the old equipment or the trade in value. Also, this avoidable cost of repairs. But take note, we have to get the tax effect. No? So, if it's, um, if it's a loss, so there's tax savings. If it's a gain, then may tax loss tayo. No? So, yun, be careful with that. But I've already provided you with the concept. No? So, just be familiar with um, all those um, guidelines, no? especially when to effect the tax uh, tax rate. All right. So, let's Net investment. So, if you want to net So, class, uh, imagine na lang, no? Um, capital budgeting. Uh, of course, we're more concerned with the financial calculations. But in reality, meron tayong mga returns which are non-monetary. Parang ganito, no? Imagine mo na lang si... Si... San Miguel. Si San Miguel, ang hilig niya mag gawa maggawa uh, and partnership with government no uh, gawa ng mga expressway no so kung napunta mo na tong skyway 3 nako I, I used to travel to uh, well using edsa no to travel to bataan no so i go to edsa and then north to zone expressway SCTEX, and then finally in bataan uh, dun pa lang sa edsa it parang it takes Two hours, no? Depende pa yun kung rush hour. Pag rush hour, it's, it could be more than two hours. No, from my place, no, actually, just in EDSA, no? Just to go to exit in uh, Balintawak, no? But with Skyway 3, parang inorasan ko yun. Eh, that I'm, I'm very happy with Skyway 3. No? Parang it took me 17 minutes lang. Eh, yung 17 minutes na yung mabagal pa ako mag-drive, no? So, imagine yung mga kaskasero. So, uh, mas mabilis ba yan, no? So, anong, anong point ko doon? San Miguel, being, having, having invested in, in those infrastructures, yes, they will reap returns, no? Of course, nung gubay tayo initially, is subsidized ng government, and then they can uh, requ request for increase in tolls, no? Ngayon, may, nagbabayad ka ng tolls, no? But in, in my case, I, I'd rather pay, no? Kaysa naman maubos yung oras ko sa, sa EDSA, no? Pero, Yun nga, well, that's that's another another story. Pero there is also non-monetary returns to SMC. Ano ano kaya yun? Siguro una, um, dahil they're also present in uh, in different parts of the Philippines, no? So yung mobility ng product nila from point A to point B, baka mas bumilis that with with the, with uh, the launch of Skyway Three, no? So again. Meron mga non-monetary returns, but today, we'll discuss more of the, of course, monetary returns. No? Accounting net income and net cash inflows. No? And we go now to discussion problem number two on returns. No? So, the requirements are, number one, determine the expected increase in annual net income of Piolo Company if the machine is acquired and use in the new sales outlet. And number two, determine the annual net cash inflows that will be generated by the new machine. So again, this is a capital budgeting uh, problem. So there's capital investment involved. So ano ba yun? Pag-usapan natin, Piolo Company plans to buy a Shopao making machine that will be installed in its new sales outlet. The machine will cost 200,000, including freight and installation costs of 10,000 pesos. It is expected to have a service life of four years with no salvage value. 
Sales of Shopao are estimated at 4,000 units per month at a price of 20 per unit. Variable costs are estimated at 12 pesos per unit. Incremental fixed costs excluding depreciation are estimated at 180,000 pesos per year. The company's income tax rate is 30%. Okay. Isa-isahin natin yan. Punta tayo ngayon sa problem number two. Right. So, syempre, uh, since we're talking of increase in net income, of course, we have to uh, prepare our net income. And since the given uh, items here in, include variable cost, no? so parang dun pa lang, alam mo na ang, hini, ang hinihingi sa yung income statement format would be the contribution margin format. No? So, we have sales. Sales, sabi, di ba? Uh, if we purchase that machine, sales of Shopao are estimated at 4,000 units per month. 4,000 multiplied by 12 months times 20, 20 being the selling price. So that's 960,000. Variable cost of 12, so 4,000 multiplied by 12 months times 12. So that's 576,000. Of course, you deduct that too. So meron ka na ngayon contribution margin. So buuin ko to para at least uh, when you go back to the recording, eh, mas madaling, madaling masusundan. Variable cost, this is contribution margin. This is fixed cost. Okay, so of course, uh, also cash fixed cost, and it's given naman. How much is the cash fix cost? Sabi, 180,000. And then the depreciation. So depreciation is 200,000 divided by 4. 4 kasi yan yung service life of 4 years. No? And there's no salvage value. So therefore, total depreciation is 50,000. Now we add the 2. We now have the total fix cost of 230,000. So inad lang natin tong 180. And the depreciation of 15. Of course, um, contribution margin of 384,000 less 230,000, we get the income before tax of 154,000. How much is the tax rate? It's 30%. So 154,000 multiplied by 30%. So that's 46,200. No? And then we deduct it from the income before tax. We now have the net income of 107,800. So that's, um, that's the answer to requirement one. Now in requirement two, determine the annual net cash inflows that will be generated by the new machine. So again, class, um, as we know, Pag sinabi natin net cash inflow, tatandaan lang is we have to adjust our net income no, to, uh, to ano, ano yung mga kailangan i-adjust, yung mga elements nga that do not involve cash movements. No? So for example, depreciation, we also have amortization, yun nga, gains and losses from uh, sales of machines. No? So yun. So in this case, isa lang naman, we have depreciation. So we have the net income of 107,800. Na compute na natin yan. And of course, uh, we have to add back the depreciation. No? So, depreciation of 50,000. No? So, net cash inflow is 157,800. Now, there's another way to calculate it. No? Pero I suggest we follow uh, this procedure. No? But like I said, there's another way to calculate it. So all you have to do is get the net cash inflows after tax, but before depreciation. So ano ba yun? So that's uh, 142,800. So basically 384,000 less 180,000 multiplied by 70% para maging net of tax. And then add the tax savings due to depreciation. So yung tax savings natin 
ng depreciation simply 50,000 multiplied by 30%. Kaya siya ulit tax savings kasi um, ang depreciation will decrease the taxable income. So in effect, nakaka-save tayo ng nakaka-save tayo from paying tax, no? So lumiliit yung taxable income, mas lumiliit yung tax base, mas lumiliit yung tax expense or tax liability, no? Okay. So total is 157,800, no? So that's that's the answer to question number 2. Okay. So, ganun yung ginagawa nating approach class. Ha? So, we go first with the theory, attack the theory, and then uh, apply it in the problem. No? So, next uh, element, no, sabi natin capital investment factors, we have net investment and then returns, and finally, cost of capital. Yung cost of capital naman, basically, ito diba sabi natin, uh, we can finance capital investment by way of uh, long-term liabilities or utang, no? simply. O utang ka or by way of issuing shares. No? So, of course, we have to understand each concept. No? So, if it's creditors, ang sabi natin, the capital, so, the source of capital would be the long-term debt. Paano ngayon compute yung cost of capital? Ayun. So, if it's creditors, it's after tax rate of interest multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. If it's a preferred stock, so sabi, the, the formula is preferred dividends per share divided by current market price or net issuance price. Pag sinabi natin net issuance price by the word net, ibig sabihin may dinedak. Ano ngayon yung mga dinedak sa issuance price? So ito yung mga issuance costs or simply flotation cost. No? So, tandaan yan, class. Eh? And then, for common stock, we have CAPM or DDM. Ako, ano ba itong DD? CAPM or DDM. So, CAPM, this is Capital Asset Pricing Model. So, basically, there's a formula. It's R is equals to RF plus beta multiplied by RM minus RF. Class, Ang, ang importante naman for CAPM is for you to know the formula because the rest the rest of the uh, the rest of the elements will be provided in the problem no? so we don't really have to compute for it no? so just have to be familiar with the term so sabi natin R what is R? This is the rate of return RF is risk free rate determined by the government securities. And beta, beta coefficient of an individual stock, which is the correlation between the volatility of the stock market and the volatility of the price. So like I said, class, um, this will be provided in the problem. So there is no way uh, we'll be co computing for this. No? So these are, uh, these are say, uh, a product of uh, knowledge and, and understanding of uh, different profession. No? And RM, this is the market return. Now, kung mapapansin mo, we have RM minus RF, or simply this is the market risk premium. No? So kasi um, there might be a chance where uh, instead of providing you RM and RF, simply it provides you with market risk premium. So uh, actually, the market risk premium is simply your RM minus RF. Huh? So again, huh? uh, you don't, we don't really need to calculate for RF, for beta, for RM and RF. All we need to do in CAPM is to know the formula. All right. Next, we have the dividend growth model. So it's in DDM or DGM. Okay. So dividend discount model. No? So the formula to get the cost of retained earnings, it's D sub 1 over P sub 0 plus G. Ito class, ha? if you watch my recording and the time value of money, you should be familiar with D sub 1 and P sub 0. No? So 
uh, again, I encourage you to watch that recording. It's a lengthy recording. It's a lengthy discussion, but it will give you the flavor of time value of money. No? Well, in fact, time value of money is part of the whole discussion on, cash, on, on capital budgeting. No? So, sabi natin, P sub zero, this is the current price, or sabi ko doon, price now. D sub one is next dividend, meaning it's the dividend next year. E paano kung D sub zero? So, pag sinabi D sub zero, it's the dividend this year or dividend now. Plus G, ano, yun, ano ngayon yung G dito? It's the growth rate in dividends per share. All right. Now, what, what if it's cost of new common stock? So again, it's D sub 1 over P sub 0. Same pa rin naman yan. Multiply by 1 minus the flotation cost. Tandaan, ang flotation cost, this is the cost of issuing new securities. No? So, bakit walang, walang flotation cost sa retained earnings? O class, ha? retained earnings is simply your accumulated profit. No? So, there's no uh, issue once that's there. No? So, that's why there's no flotation cost involved. Para maintindihan yan, let's have problem number three. Cost of debt muna tayo. No? So, remember, ha? Uh, in, in cost of capital, we've discussed three. So, we have cost of debt, cost of preferred stock, cost of retained earnings, and cost of uh, common stock. Uh, in cost of common stock, pinag-usapan natin yung CAPM and DGM. No? So, ngayon, isa-isay natin, i-apply natin sa problem. No? So, let's have problem number three. Problem number three. So, Piolo Incorporated currently outstanding 8% coupon bonds have a yield to maturity of 10%. Piolo believes it could issue new bonds at a par that would provide a similar yield to maturity. If the income tax rate is 30%, what is Piolo's income's income after tax cost of debt? What is Piolo incorporated after tax cost of debt? So it's not income, it's incorporated. Okay, so ano ba yung formula muna natin? Formula to get the uh, long-term debt, no? So cost of debt tayo. So sabi, it's after tax rate of interest of 10%. 1 minus 70%. No, 70%, this is 100% less 30%. 30% is the tax rate. No? So, ay, kinukuha natin dito is after tax. So, pag sinabi after tax, you have to deduct the tax. No? Kaya nga, after tax. No? So, 100% less, less 30%, so it's 70%. No? So, now, pwede na tayo mag-compute. So, it's 10% multiplied by 70% or 7%. No? So this is uh, this is the answer to the problem. No? So the answer is 7%. This is the in the after tax cost of debt. No? Simple lang siya kung paano na compute. Ayun lang yung formula na no? sinundan lang natin. Okay, so Next, we have problem number four, still in cost of debt, no? para at least mas ma strengthen pa yung understanding. Piolo Enterprises has a series of 9% coupon bonds outstanding with a 1,000 pesos par value. The bonds mature in 10 years and currently sell for 1,112. If new bonds are issued, the issuance cost is expected to be 12 pesos per bond. Piolo's marginal tax rate is 30%. What is the marginal after tax cost of debt for Piolo? Sige. Yeah. Problem number four. Tandaan, in problem number four, meron na mga pinag-uusapan ng mga issuance cost. No? So, pag-usapan muna natin isa-isa yan. 
So sabi, uh, uh, we have the 1,000 being the par value. So okay tayo dyan. And then maturity of 10 years currently sell uh, for 1,112. No? So ito class, itong gross price natin 1,112. Compared with the par value, so meron tayong tinatawag na premium. No? So imagine na, ganito. Uh, ang par value ng bond, 1,000 lang. When you sell it above, the, higher than the par value, so meron ka ngayon tinatawag na premium. That premium, kung natatundaan nyo sa financial accounting and reporting nyo, that premium will be amortized throughout the life of the bond. No? So in this case, 10 years. No? So, we have the gross price of 1,112 1, 1, less the issuance cost. No? So, magkano ba issuance cost? 12 pesos per bond. No? So, basically, every time you issue uh, a bond, meron, daw, meron issuance cost. It could be um, charges, no? bank charges. So, sabi, 12 pesos per bond. So, now, the net price is 1,100. Of course, the net price compared with the par value, you can now get the premium. So as, again, itong premium na ito, ito yung ina-amortize natin throughout the life of the band. Okay. Now let's also uh, compute the interest. Kasi later on, I'll be uh, providing you with another another set of formula no, to compute for the yield to maturity. No? Kaya iniisay sa muna natin yung mga given. So we have the par value of 1,000. Again, this is given. Multiply by the interest rate. No? Wag magpapahito. Ha? This is still the inter interest rate. No? So marginal tax rate is 30%. So uh, ano, this is tax. I mean, no? So interest rate is 9%. No? So 1,000 multiplied by 9%. So that's 90. Ngayon, um, with I mean, uh, now that we have calculated these uh, elements, we can now proceed with the yield to maturity. O class, yield to maturity, this is also called as book yield or redemption yield. Again, wag magpapalito. Uh, when you say book yield, when you see book yield and redemption yield, this is similar with yield to maturity. All right? Okay. So, paano ngayon yung formula? Sabi dyan, interest plus discount amortization or less premium amortization. Kasi class, itong premium and discount na to, this will impact the total interest expense that we record in our books. No? So sabi dyan, if it's a premium, it should be deducted to the interest. No? Of course, if it's a discount, the amortization should be added. And then, uh, your denominator is proceeds multiplied by 60% plus maturity value multiplied by 40%. Isa say natin yan. So, we have uh, the interest of 90. Tapos ngayon itong premium, oh, sabi, ko, sabi ko kanina, di ba? Premium should be amortized. No? So, therefore, 100 divided by 10. Oh, Salagay ko lang dito, premium amortization para at least may guide ka. So you have your premium and then the terms. Premium of 100 and then 10 years. So premium divided by 10 years, so that's 10. So meron kang 90 na interest less the premium amortization. So lagay ko dito, premium amortization. of 10. No? So, meron ka na ngayong 80, kunin natin yung denominator natin. So, sabi lang naman dyan, it's proceeds. Proceeds, of course, is the net price multiplied by 60% plus the maturity value. Eh, syempre, maturity value natin is the bar. So, maturity value, so that's 1,000 multiplied by 40%. Or, it's 7.547%. No? So, this is the answer to problem number four. Okay. Ayan, huh? So, 
So problem number five. Oh, so ulitin natin na cost of capital tapos na tayo kay uh, cost of debt. Ngayon punta natin si cost of preferred stock. So Piolo Corporation plans to issue some 50 pesos par preferred stock with a 6% dividend. A similar stock is selling on the market for 60 pesos. Piolo must pay flotation costs of 2% of the issue of the issue price. The income tax rate is 30%. What is the cost of preferred stock? So uh, we have number five. Let's have problem number five. Kung napapansin nyo, class, palaging ginagawa natin is, ayun yung problem and yung concept, no? Para at least ngayon pa lang mafam maging familiar ka na, no? So preferred stock. So ang sabi dito, formula is preferred dividends per share divided by the current market price or net issuance price. No? Of course, compute natin dito yung mga relevant uh, information. So we have dividends, so that's 50 par multiplied by 6% dividend, so meron ka lang yung dividend per share. Market price is given, that's 60. And, of course, the flotation cost also given 2%. No? So, ngayon, meron na tayong preferred dividends per share of 3. Current market price, sabi natin, di ba? Current market price or net issuance price. So, therefore, 60 multiplied by 98% para makuha natin yung net issuance price. No? So, meron kang market price of 60, less may flotation cost. Tandaan, flotation cost is similar with issuance cost. No? So, ito yung mga charges niya. So, therefore, the answer to question, to problem number 5 is 5.10%. So, hopefully, ganito ka dadali yung mga problem. No? At least, uh, I mean, we can... For sure, no, we can co compute for this just by following this formula. Okay, so that's problem number five. Now let's have problem number six. This time, uh, let's apply the uh, concept of DGM. Okay. Sabi natin, DGM or the discount um, growth model, paano daw yan? Paano ang pag-compute ng DGM. So, basahin natin yung problem. Piolo Company currently pays a common stock dividend of 20 pesos per share. The common stock price is 100 pesos. Analysts have forecast the earnings and dividends to grow at an average annual rate of 5% for the foreseeable future. The issuance price per share is 4 pesos. The requirements are, number one, what is the cost of retained earnings? And number two, what is the cost of new equity? Again, uh, in this type of problem, wala tayong, pro wala tayong magiging problema. We just need to follow the formula. So, unahin muna natin ano ba yung mga given. Okay. So, we have the dividend, sabi dyan, dividend of 20. This is dividend zero, sub zero. So meaning this is dividend now. The common stock price of 100, so given pa rin. Issuance cost of 4 pesos, again given. Now, uh, since, oops. Since we have uh, been provided with the growth rate, sabi dyan, 5%. We can now compute for the next year's dividend. No? So next year's dividend or D sub zero is 21. Paano kinompute yun? So 20 multiplied by 1.05. So lagyan lang natin ng growth of 5%. No? So that's 21. That's your D sub zero. And finally, your growth rate. That's given naman. Bakit in-apply yung growth rate to both uh, uh, earnings and dividends? Ayun, class, given naman. Analysts have forecasted that the earnings and dividends will grow at an average annual rate of 5%. No? So that's why we use it uh, also to forecast the next dividend or your D sub zero. 
Okay, so with that, we can now compute for the cost of retained earnings. So it's D sub zero divided by P sub zero plus the growth rate. No? So we have 21. Paano kinu kinuwa yung 21? Ayun, D sub, D sub 1 of 21 divided by P sub zero or the current price of 100 plus the growth rate of 5%. So 21 divided by 100, so that's 0 0.21 plus 5%. No? So that's 26%. No? That This is the answer to requirement number one. Ngayon, the next requirement is to compute for the cost of uh, equity. So in this case, sundan natin ngayon yung uh, formula. So we have D sub 1. Multiply uh, divided by P sub 0, 1 minus the flotation cost plus G. G again is the growth rate. No? So, ito naman, uh, parang puzzle na lang to, no? So, we have the next dividend, D sub 1, so to 21. Ito ngayon, sabi diba, uh, price now, P sub 0, 100, less the flotation cost. Flotation cost in this case is 4. Okay. Ito kasi yung formula dito class, 1 minus flotation cost. We we only use this if it's in percentage terms, no? In this case, binigay sa atin yung absolute peso amount, eh, no? So, we don't need to use this, no? Since said uh, 100 less 4, no? So that's 96. 21 divided by 96, so it that's 0 0.21875 plus 5%. So the cost of new equity is 26.88 percent okay so that's problem number six so that's dgm or uh of course the next concept is capm so sabi ko kanina in capm hindi naman natin talaga kailangan alamin kung paano kung paano na nag-arrive yung sa beta all we have to do is to make sure na alam natin yung formula. So in that case, so basahin natin yung problem. Piolo has a beta of 0 0.8. The current risk free rate is 5% and the market rate is 8%. What is the cost of equity capital? So again, we have RF. RF is uh, 5%. RM is 8%. And beta of 0 0.8. Now that we have identified the pertinent information available, we can now substitute it, no? We can apply it to the formula. So RF, 5% plus beta of 0 0.8 multiplied by the difference between the RM minus the RF or simply the market risk premium, no? So we get 7.4%, no? So ganun ka simple ang CAPM provided alam mo syempre yung formula. So ito talaga yung key to determine, uh, I mean to solve problems in CAPM. No? So that's cost of capital. Sige, ito doon na natin. No? Uh, since natapos na natin i-cover lahat ng uh, cost of capital. So remember, long-term debt, we have the preferred stock and common stock. Ngayon, pag-usapan natin, what if masyado talagang malaking project. No? So, Imagine mo yung 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 project na nakiel kanina, di ba? So, yung sa Dubai, so man-made uh, man-made islands, no? So isipin mo na lang, si Dubai ay eh, hindi siya self-sufficient, no? So Dubai would need long-term debt and then yun nga, uh, different different uh, issuance of equity para lang mabuo yung 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 funding. So in that case, paano nga natin i-account lahat yon kung isang project eh, will require financing from different sources. No? So, paano natin yun uh, gagawin? Let's have problem number eight or the weighted average cost of capital. 
So the requirement is, of course, what is the firm's weighted average cost of capital? So Piolo's new financing will be in proportion to the market value of its current financing shown below. So we have the long-term debt of 8 million carrying amount, preferred stock of 2 million, common stock of 5 million. The firm's bonds are currently selling at 120% of par, generating a current market yield of 8%. The corporation has 30% tax rate. The preferred stock is currently selling at 18 pesos per share and pays a, div a 5% dividend. The common stock has current market value of 21.5. The company paid dividend of 4 pesos per share. Dividend growth rate is expected to be 6% per year and flotation costs are negligible. So when we say negligible, it's immaterial. No? So meaning, uh, we don't need to consider it. Ngayon class, uh, ito tip lang. Ha? Uh, unang basa, parang ang daming data na nakalagay. Pero in fact class, uh, kung iisa-isayin mo to, mas madali. No? So paano natin atakin yung mga gantong problem na Unang tingin, parang ang sakit sa mata, ang daming numbers na nakikita. Pag-usapan natin yung problem number 8. Okay. So, problem number 8. Uh, since we're, uh, sabi nga natin, uh, instead of just one source, eh, masyado malaki yung project, kailangan natin ng uh, multiple multiple sources of funds no so meron ta nang utang na tayo nag-issue pa tayo ng shares no at hindi lang isang share nag-issue tayo ng preferred stock and common stock so ngayon compute natin yung weighted average cost of capital of course um una i suggest kunin mo na agad to no ito na, ito na yung magiging format natin so we have the sources of capital so long term debt oops kagay ka na lang para hindi ka malito Long-term debt, we have the preferred stock and the common stock. Getting amount given, that's 8 million, 2 million, and 5 million. Market value, pag-usapan natin itong market value ng long-term debt. So sabi dyan, the firm's bonds are currently selling at 120% of par. So therefore, kunin mo yung carrying amount, multiply by 120% to get the market value. Okay? Next, preferred stock. O, so paano naman yung preferred stock? Sabi yung preferred stock is currently selling at 18 pesos. Ilan ba yung stocks na meron? 100,000 multiplied by the selling price of 18. So that's 1.8 million. O, diba? Parang sumisimple na ngayon no? kung meron ka ng procedure. Common stock, paano yung pag-compute? So, meron kang 400,000 shares multiplied by the current market price of 21.5. No? So, that's 8.6 million. Now, get the sum. So, that's 20 million. Kasi from here, we can now get the proportion of funds based on market value. Kaya kinukuha natin yung weighted average uh, cost of capital, of course, we need to have a basis. No? So in this case, ang basis natin is market value. So paano na compute yung 48%? So that's 9,600 or 9,600,000 pesos divided by 20 million. No? So 48%. Then 9% for preferred stock, so 1.8 million divided by divided by 20, 20 million, and then 8.6 million divided by uh, 20 million, so that's 43%, so 100% so naman yan. Now, paano nga yun tong cost of capital? Of course, sa cost of capital, eh, baka sabihin mo, paulit-ulit na tayo, kasi ilang beses natin pinag-usapan yan, no? So, Definitely, we have to compute for each. No? So, paano mag-compute ng long-term ng cost of debt, cost of preferred stock, and cost of common stock. So, isa-isa yung natin para at least mas, mas uh, maintindihan mo pa or mas ma-appreciate mo pa lalo yung concept. Unahin natin yung cost of debt. E sabi natin dyan, di ba? It's the interest multiplied by 1 minus the tax rate. So, magkano ba yung interest natin dyan? Sabi, the current yield of 8% 
and the tax rate is 30. So therefore, so that's 8% multiplied by 1 minus 30% or 5.6%. So yan na yung cost of debt natin. Punta natin ngayon yung cost of preferred stock. Eh, alam naman natin yung formula. That's preferred dividends per share divided by current market price or net issuance price. Eh, since meron ka na ngayon preferred dividend, 1 peso daw, paano na compute yung 1 peso? Simply, 20 pesos na par multiplied by 5%. E eh, paano ba nakuha yung par? Ito naman class, no? Basic accounting mo lang to. So that's 2 million divided by 100,000 shares. No? So that's the par value. Again, the, the preferred share, preferred stock dividend of 1, paano na compute yan? Par value of 20 multiplied by 5% dividend. So that's 1 peso. Okay? So okay na tayo dyan. Meron ka ngayong uh, current market price. Current market price of 18. Pero yung 18 na yan, given naman. Ayun. So the 1 divided by 18, so that's 5.56. No? Pag-usapan ngayon natin yung um, common stock. So again, sabi dyan, D sub 0 divided by the flotation cost, or P sub 0, uh, less 1 minus the flotation cost plus the growth rate. No? So isa-isa nyo natin yung dividend um, ng, ng common stock. So sabi natin, D sub 1, pag D sub 1 is the dividend next period. Meron ka ngayon par value. Meron kang dividend ngayon na 4. Eh sabi diba dividend growth is 6%. So 4 multiplied by 1.06. So that's uh, that's 4. Ah, sige lang. Dito 4. Should be yan. 4.24. And then 22 or the current uh, current market price. Eh, since wala namang flotation cost, kasi sabi natin dito, flotation cost are negligible. Okay? Plus the growth rate. The growth rate is given, no? 6%. So therefore, 4.24 divided by uh, 21.5 plus 6% is equivalent to 25.72%. Ngayon, alam na natin yung mga cost of capital. Ito, tapos na tayo dyan, eh. So, plot na natin sa table natin. So, 5.6, 5.56, and 25.72. Meron na tayo ngayon cost of capital. Kunin na natin ngayon yung weighted cost. No? So, simply, yung market uh, pro proportions of funds based on market value multiplied by the cost of capital. So, that's 2.69% for debt. 9% multiplied by 5.56, that's 0.5% for preferred stock. 43% multiplied by 25.72%, that's 11.06%. So get the sum, that's 14.25%. No? And actually, that's the answer to requirement for problem number 8. The weighted average cost of capital. Okay, so recap lang muna. Natapos na natin yung uh, three factors uh, of capital investment. No? So sabi natin, we have the net investment, net returns, and cost of capital. So we've completed all those concepts. So we go now to the different um, methods to evaluate capital investment projects. No? So we, actually, we have two methods. So unang method is one that do not consider the time value of money. And of course, the next method is those methods that, that consider the time value of money or we call it discounted cash flow method. No? So again, isa-isa natin siya. Uh, Pag-usapan muna natin uh, yung concept bawat isa, then we'll illustrate it by way of a discussion problem. No? So let's have number one, payback period. So payback period simply class, ganito lang yan. No? 
So, nag-invest ka ng 1 million pesos. Ang tanong mo palagi, um, kailan ko yan mababawi? Karang ganun, no? Ikaw naman eh, kahit in, in real life. Um, Siyempre, in real life, pag naglabas ka ng money, nag-invest ka, eh, gusto mo kailan mo siya mababawi? Agad ganyan yung tanong mo, no? Eh, in, for example, in, in your case, no, nag invest ka pala sa accounting books. Kainom lang ako sa glit, no? sa accounting books ka pala nag ano nag-invest no. So syempre ang tanong mo agad yan, kailan kaya ang payback period nito? Uh, ang sagot doon eh pag pagka-graduate mo, nakapasa ka na sa CPA tapos nakapag-work ka no. So that's uh yun na yung payback time no. Parang ganun. So ngayon pag-usapan lang natin simple sa capital investment no. So nag-invest ka sa building ang question mo palagi doon, kailan ko yan mababawi? Parang ganun ang payback period, no? So, the formula is net cost of initial investment or simply cost of investment divided by the annual net cash inflow. So, sabi natin, pag payback period, the shorter, the better. Kasi nga, mas maiksi yung panahon kung kailan mo siya ma-re-recover. Ma Edi mas okay. So, imagine meron ka dalawang projects, no? Kasi class, The reason why mm, we are discussing different methods, eh syempre, hindi naman lahat ng pagkakataon eh meron kang money to finance all your projects, no? Uh, there will come a time na kailangan mo pumili ng isa lang or ng dalawa lang. So, paano ngayon yung procedure na kailangan nating gawin? No? So, ito na nga. Kaya natin pinag-uusapan yung different methods in evaluating capital investment project. Kasi nga, there's a limited resources. No? Kasi kung unlimited yan, eh then huwag na tayo mag-compute, mag-invest na tayo na mag-invest. No? But in reality, uh, there's limited funds and that's why uh, we are understanding and we are trying to apply all these concepts. No? So yun lang naman yan. Sige. And next, we have the bailout period. So basically, class, in bailout period, this is similar with payback period. The only difference is with the salvage, salvage value. So in bailout period, it also includes salvage value in the calculation. And of course, we have next the accounting rate of return. Accounting rate of return, ito, basically ito yung gusto mo na uh, ma-achieve. No? So syempre, pag nag invest ka, Uh, ang mitigating, uh, parang palagi mong uh, nagmo-motivate sa'yo to invest is yung returns, eh, no? So, simply, pag sinabi natin accounting rate of return, ito yung gusto mo na ma makuha mo, no? So, it's call, it, it is also called the book value rate of return, financial statement method, average return on investment, and adjust, an adjusted rate of return. Pero pansinin, ang formula is average annual net income divided by the investment. Ngayon, apply natin yung mga concept na yun. No? So, tandaan mo na ha, recap lang ulit bago tayo mag, magpunta dun sa discussion problem. Meron tayong uh, different methods to evaluate capital investment. Right now, we are focusing first on the methods that do not Uh, apply the concept of time value of money. So meaning, ito na yung mga values involved. No? Uh, Pag-usapan natin yung discussion problem number nine, what are the requirements? Number one, payback period. Number two, accounting rate of return based on original investment, letter A. And letter B, average investment. Number three, if the firm's cost of capital is 10%, Is the project acceptable? Oh, so, ito na. Ito na yung sabi natin, di ba? It's really not about uh, getting the numbers, no? but really us interpreting the numbers. No? Kasi doon tayo nakakapag-add value. We add value to the organization that we're involved in by way of interpreting those numbers. Kasi nga, even robot can now calculate those numbers. No? So, imagine mo, walang ang trabaho kung ang alam mo lang is, oh, ito na, uh, bibigay mo lang yung number. No? Anong, an, ano yung numbers na yan? No? So that's really our role as an accountant or as financial managers. So let me read the problem. 
Piolo Company is considering the purchase of new data transmission equipment. Estimated annual cash revenues for the new equipment are 1 million and operating costs including depreciation of 400,000 pesos are 825,000 pesos. The equipment costs 2 million, it has 5 year life and it will have no residual value at the end of 5 years. The income tax rate is 30%. Compute the payback period for the piece of equipment. Does this method yield a positive or negative response to the proposal to buy the equipment if the company has a set maximum payable payback period of four years? Ayan, dami niyang tanong, pero isa-isa natin yan, ha? Uh, we have, let's have discussion problem number nine. So, discussion problem number nine. Na na, ang formula natin sa payback period is net cost of initial investment divided by the net cash inflows. Of course, computein muna natin yung net cash inflow. So, meron tayong... Uh, cost of investment of 2 million that's given. That's the new equipment. The cash revenue of 1 million also given. Operating cost of 825,000. Income before tax of 175. So simply 1 million less 825. So that's 175,000. Less the tax of 52,500. So we have the net income of 122,500. Remember, in the 825,000, the depreci depreciation is included. So therefore, we have to add it back. How much is the depreciation? Ayun, 400,000. So ito naman, kabisado na natin, no? especially we have discussed cash, uh, statement of cash flow. No? So 122,500 plus 400,000, so that's 522,500. That's the net cash inflow. Pero hindi pa yan yung hinahanap sa atin. So the formula to get your payback period is investment divided by the net cash inflow. So meron na tayong investment that's given, that's 2 million, divided by the net cash inflow. Now uh, we have calculated it, so that's 522,500 or simply 3.83 years. No? So tandaan, 3.83 years, yan yung time bago tayo maka bago tayo maka-recover. So imagine ha, uh, maglalabas ka ng 2 million pesos ngayon to buy a new equipment. Ang sinasabi lang ng payback period, ah, in 3.83 years, marirecover mo na yung 2 million pesos na yan. So ganun, no? Ngayon, of course, kailan tayo makakapag-decide whether this is a good investment or not? Ah, Siyempre, dapat make a point of comparison. Una, siguro, uh, ano ba yung... Uh, company policy. So dito, given, the company policy is ito, maximum payback period of 4 years. So therefore, this project this project is acceptable kasi nga, it is shorter than the maximum payback period of 4 years. No? So that's 3.83 years. So ganun lang kasimple ang payback period. Let's have number 2. Number 2, accounting rate of return naman. Sabi natin, the accounting rate of return should be compared with the desired rate of return. Ano nga ulit yung desired rate of return? Simply your cost of sorry, so your cost of capital. Sige. Pag-usapan natin yung accounting rate of return, pero ayun no, given na yung formula, it's average annual net income divided by the investment. E, pero dito sinabi Ang gamitin natin, letter A, original investment, and letter B, average investment. Paano ba muna yung pag-compute ng average investment? Eh, kabisado nyo na yan. It's simply the initial investment plus the salvage value. And since we don't have salvage value here, so that's 2 million divided by 2 para makuha natin yung average. No? So that's 1 million. 
Now, um, nakumpute natin yung accounting net income natin kanina, di ba? That's 122,500 divided by the original investment. So that's 6.13%. Next, accounting net income divided by the average investment, 122,500. Sagit lang, papaalala ko lang paano na-compute yung... Kanina kasi kinumpute natin yung net income. Ayun. No? Kaya hindi na natin kinukompute ulit. No? Okay. So, that's 122,500 divided by the average investment. So, that's 12.25%. Ngayon, paano tayo makakapag-decide kung acceptable ba yung project or not? Siyempre, kailangan natin compare with the desired rate of return or simply your cost of capital. And dun sa number 3 nakalagay, if the firm's cost of capital is 10%, is the project acceptable? So the answer is yes, kasi 12.25% is higher than the 10%. So okay tayo, no? But if it's the original investment, eh hindi, no? Kasi nga 10% yung uh, cost of capital, yan yung desired rate of return natin versus 6.13%. No? So ganun, ganun ang, ang approach no? in, uh, in deciding which um, project to pursue. So that's problem number nine. Pansin in class, in problem number nine, the cash, the cash flow is... Uh, uniform no so meaning ang assumption natin dito is pare-parehas uh, yearly yung matatanggap nating money pero hindi palagi kasi ganun yung case that's why uh, in problem number 10 we have here an example where uh, cash inflows are not uniform no so meaning like it it varies per year no so uh, required uh, compute the payback period. So let me read the problem. Piolo Incorporated, a cologne producer, is considering the purchase of a special purpose bottling machine for 200,000. It is expects it is expected to have a useful life of 5 years with a zero terminal disposal price. O wag magpapalito, this zero terminal disposal price is simply your salvage value. The plant manager estimates that the machine will generate net cash inflows as follows. So year one, 100,000, year two, and so on and so forth. No? So that's uh, five, uh, in year five, 10,000. Piolo Incorporated is using a required rate of return of 12% in capital budgeting decisions. So this is a required rate of return. This is your desired rate of return. No? It pays income tax at the rate of 30%. Okay. So, alam natin yung mga given. Pag-usapan natin yung problem number 10. Okay. okay. So, in problem number 10, basically class, ang, ang issue na dito is hindi para parehas yung cash inflow, ha? So, paano, na, paano yung atake pag ganito yung problem? Kunin ko lang ta side by side. Of course, the net investment is 200. Given naman yan, ayun yun. So, dibili ng uh, special purpose bottling machine. So, year one, meron tayong net cash inflows. One hundred thousand, seventy thousand, forty thousand, twenty thousand, and ten thousand no, for years 1 to 5. Given yan, no? So, wala pa tayong ginagawa. So, given pa rin, wala pa rin tayong ginagawa. Now, uh, the running total. So, running total, kailangan kasi natin makuha yung accumulated per year, no? Para na, para makompute natin yung payback period. Because the payback period naman, the formula remains the same. No? So, kunin ko lang to para, oops, not this one, this one. Para at least, uh, Ito, uh, may recall na agad dun sa formula. No? Okay. So, 
running total of course uh, year 1 nakareceive tayo ng cash inflow of 100,000 so okay lang yan year 2 yung cumulative so 100,000 plus 70 so that's 170,000 and then by year 4 i sorry by year 3 so 170 plus 40 meron na tayong 210,000 and at this stage we have fully recovered na the initial investment of 210,000 so therefore there will be a fraction no so it has to be proportionate no so paano natin ko computein yung pro, yung paano natin ko computein yung proportion no so 170 200,000 less 170 so that's 30,000 lagay ko dito para at least uh, masundan so 200,000 less 170,000 so that's 30,000 divide by 40,000. Kaya ako nakuha yung 30 over 40. No? So, 30,000 divided by 40,000. See, that's 0.75. So, therefore, the payback period is um, two years. So, 1, 2, plus 0.75. Or simply, 2.75 years or two years and nine months. No? So that's period of period with an even cash flows, no. So that's problem number ten. Pan naman kung may bailout. So in in discussion problem eleven, imagine ah, talagang we are strengthening our understanding of payback period. Kasi pangatlong beses na to, no. So pag-usapan ulit natin yung payback period and then requirement number two is bailout period. So, Piolo Company purchased a new machine on January 1 of this year for 380,000 with an estimated useful life of 5 years and salvage value of 20,000 pesos at the end of its useful life. The machine will be depreciated using straight line method. The expected after-tax cash inflows and estimated salvage values for each year during the life of the project are as follows. So we have the net cash inflows; it's an even, and then we have the salvage value. Because in class, salvage value is given here. Because in the bailout period, remember, the difference of the bailout period with payback period is with the calculation of salvage value. So let's have problem number eleven. Okay. So ito naman ah yung sa payback period. Kung paano natin ina kung paano yung approach natin kanina gan ulit ng gagawin natin no so I suggest try this one. And then hopefully you get the same same uh, answer to mine, no? Because, uh, parang pangatlong ulit na natin tong gagawin, no? So might as well try it yourselves, no? So we go to uh, requirement number two or the bailout period, no? So yun yung pag-usapan natin. So bailout period, we have the net investment of three hundred eighty thousand years one to five. So, yan pa rin naman yung given. Net cash inflows of 140, 120, 190, and 80. So, wala pa tayong ginagawa. Pinaplot pa lang natin. Salvage value of 40, 35, and 30. Lagay ko na rin to para at least kompleto. 25 and 20. Now, running total. So, running total is simply... Your net cash inflow and salvage value, so hundred eighty thousand. Parang ganto yung class na. In in bailout, parang ang kaya bailout yun. Parang every year tinetest tinetest natin whether whether we we're better off selling the 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 new machine, no? In this case, no. So, magkano ba yung running total ng year one? So sabi one forty plus forty. Hundred eighty thousand. Pwede na ba natin ibenta? So remember ha, ang point of comparison natin is hundred forty thousand. No, so the answer is no. Year two, we have one twenty plus thirty five. 
So, 155,000. Ang nire-recover natin is 240. So, that's 380 less 140. So, that's 240,000. Year 3, 100,000 plus 30,000. Pero in this case, ang nire-recover na lang natin is 120. Paano na compute yung 120? 240 less 120. So, dito kasi yung original pa na 380. Oh, ulitin natin ha. Running total, kinu kinuha ko yan by adding net cash inflow plus salvage value. So, 180,000. Lagay ko to siguro. Oops. Para at least. Ayan. Parang dito, no? Uh, ito yung year one, running total 180 versus the amount to recover of 380. Question, magbibenta ba tayo? Imagine na, kung magbibenta tayo, 180,000 lang yung makukuha natin. So the answer is no. Na? Year 2, running total 155 versus 240. 240, eto na lang yung kailangan natin i-recover by year 2. By, paano na compute yun? 3, 380 less 140, so that's 240. Again, uh, do we do we sell it? Again, no. Kasi nga, kumbinenta, eh, hindi, hindi mo naman marirecover lahat. No? 240 pa eh. Ang mabibenta mo lang, 155. So it's still no. Next, year 3. Year 3, running total is 130,000. But the amount right now to recover is 120,000 na lang. So therefore, pwede ka na magbenta. So in that case, Kunin na ulit natin yung proportion. Paano ngayon yung pag-compute niyan? So, 120,000 less 30,000. And then, yung 100,000 na net cash inflow or 0 0.9. So, meron kang one year dito. And then, one year ulit dito. And then, by year 3, you can you can you you only need to recover 0 0.9. So, the bailout period is 2.9 years. So again, it's uh, similar, it's very similar with the payback period. It's just that uh, in bailout period, we are calculating for the salvage value. No? So we include that in our calculation. So that's problem number 11. Okay. Okay, so that's problem. Now, um, we are down to our last uh, few methods, no? So, di ba? Inuna natin kanina, methods that do not use the, the time value of money. So, dito na tayo sa second, uh, second half. Those methods that uh, follow or require the, the time value of money. So, we have first the net present value. So, sabi natin, uh, present value of cash inflows minus the present value of cash outflows. So that's how that's how to compute the net present value. Ngayon class, no? Ang, ang, ang palagi kong sinasabi, uh, in order for you to be familiar with the concept of time value of money, you have to refer back to my discussion of that uh, of that topic, no, to aid you to understand um, the whole concept of capital budgeting. Pero kasi, pag-uusapan pa rin naman natin yan ngayon. So, discussion problem number 12, compute the net present value or NPV. Piolo Service Station is planning to invest in automatic car wash equipment valued at 240000 the owner estimates that the equipment will increase annual net cash inflows by 46,000 pesos. The equipment is expected to have a 10-year economic life with an estimated residual value of 50,000 pesos. The company requires a 14% minimum rate of return. So that's the desired rate of return. So let's have problem number 12.
So, problem number 12. Sabi natin, di ba, class, ang, ang formula lang naman natin to compute the uh, net present value. Sige, kunin ko dito, ha, para at this. Yeah. Simply your present value of cash inflow less the present value of cash outflow. Ngayon, uh, Kailan gagamitin ang present value of an annuity? Kailan gagamitin ang present value of one? Pag ang present, pag ang problem is uniform cash flows, we'll use present value of an annuity. Of course, in salvage value naman, kasi nga one time lang naman yan at the end of the life, eh, palagi yan, present value of one. Okay? So, in this, in this, uh, topic, we're not going to discuss more of how to compute the present value factor. Again, um, that will be covered in the time value of man discussion. No? So, you have to to refer back to that discussion. Now, ang pag-uusapan natin dito is yung uh, basically when to use those factors. Kasi remember, we have two sets of tables. Eh, no? Kasi uh, it could be that the present value factors are provided in the problem, so that's one. Or number two, kung hindi provided, eh, kailangan natin computein. Yung, yung, to answer the question on how to compute the present value factor, sabi ko nga, you have to report, refer back to the time value of money discussion. Now, um, if it's just referring back to the uh, table, eh, meron tayo niyan. No? So, eto, gaya nito, pag-usapan natin to. Um, ang, ang minimum rate of return natin is 14%, no? Minimum rate of, oops, ba't ko ganyan? So, kunin natin yung present value factor at 14%. So, that's 5.216 and 0 0.27. Pero saan ba nakuha yan? Sakit lang. I- Kunin ko lang yung, ano natin, yung, yung file ko ng present value factor. Capital budgeting. Actually, I shared it in, in the file sub. Capital budgeting. Yes. So, yun, uh, present value of an annuity table, open ko siya. Sabi natin 14% and then 10 years, yun yung life, no? So, that's 5.216, yun, no? Yung isa pa. In sa salvage value naman, sabi natin 14%, 10 years, that's 0 0.217. No? So that's how to use this table. No? So going back to problem number 12. So alam na natin kung paano nakuha yan. <clears throat> Oops. Of course, this one. So kunin natin ngayon yung present value present value of cash inflows. No? So, 46,000 multiplied by 5.216, so that's 239,936. 50,000 multiplied by 0 0.27, so that's 13,500. Total present value of cash inflow 
is 253,436 less the investment. Of course, investment is 240,000. Net present value is 13,436. So this is how sim simple to calculate net present value provided that the cash inflows is uniform, no? Um, ngayon, per, uh, paano ngayon yung decision na to, no? So sabi natin, if it's positive, eh, it's it's a go, no? So like in this case, kung ito lang yung given, no? ito lang yung information provided to us, so this is a good investment. Kasi nga, we have a net present value of 13,436, which is positive, no? Eh, paano naman kung What if we have an even cash flows? No? So what is the net present value? Company is evaluating a capital investment proposal that will require an initial cash investment of 300,000. The project will have three year life. The net after tax cash flows from the project are expected to be 200,000 the first year, 150 second year, and then 120 in the third year. Salvage value five, is expected to receive at the end of the life of the project. The straight line method will be used to depreciate the project. Income tax rate is 30% and the company's cost of capital is 18%. So remember, this cost of capital is your desired rate of return. No? So let's compute for the net present value. So that's problem number 30. So dito class, uh, remember, kasi di ba kanina sabi natin, if it's even cash flow, ang ginamit natin is present value factor of an annuity of 1. No? But in this case, kasi nga yearly and eh, nagbabago yung cash flow natin, it's an even. So we have to use the present value of 1. So I suggest you get your... Uh, table, no? so present value of 1, and then get the present value factor at 18%, no? at 3 years, ha? Tandaan, 3 years lang yan. So that's 0 0.847, 0 0.718, and 0 0.069. Pero tandaan, class, oh, pansin mo itong sa year 3. Kasi yung year 3, pwede natin i-present ng ganito. No? Uh, cash inflow of 120,000. And then lagay natin the salvage value. Salvage value of 5,000. This is 120,000. Pero same yung factor, no? Kasi nga towards the end of the uh, life. So ganun pa rin naman yung makukompute natin. Okay? So the net present value, ang lagay ka to salvage value. And then class, ha? If it's an even, an and even cash flow, so meaning it varies yearly, uh, we now need to use the present value of 1. Yun lang ang di naging difference na to, no? Okay, so 200,000 multiplied by 0 0.847, so that's 169,400. Hundred fifty thousand multiplied by zero point seven one eight, so that's hundred seven thousand seven hundred. So, sige, bakalang kasi may nalilito pa. Paano na compute to, no? So, tignan natin yung present value of one. So, present value of one, ilang percent? Eighteen percent, no? So, zero point eight four seven, ayun. Plus zero point seven one eight and zero point zero six zero. 0.609. Ayun siya class, ha? So, yan. So, again, this is acceptable because we have a positive net present value of 80,630. Again, um, of course, uh, later on kasi, kailangan natin, we have to compare two projects, no? Para at least mas uh, maintindihan natin how to decide, no? But later, we'll, we'll cover that. All right. So that's problem 13. Now we have next profitability index. Profitability index is simply your total present value of cash inflows divided by the 
divide by the total present value of cash outflows. No? Pero parang ano to, no? Kung na-compute mo na yung net present value mo, parang there's no way you can't compute your profitability index. Kasi nga, etong elements to compute your profitability index are also the same elements to compute for your net present value. Na? Sige. So, pag-usapan natin yung ito, problem 14, pero ang maganda sa problem 14 plus, we'll revisit the calculation of net present value and at the same time, profitability profi, profitability index. No? So, discussion problem 14, Piolo Corporation gathered the following data on two capital investment opportunities. So, ito na. Meron tayong project 1 and project 2. Ang cost of investment ng project 1 is 378. Ang cost naman ni project 2 is 672,000. Present value of cash inflows discounted at 14% is 470 and 794 for projects 1 and 2 respectively. We have net present value of 92 and 122. Life of the project is 6 years for both. We have internal rate of return of 18 and 16%. The company's required rate of return is 14%. Limited funds are, are available for investment. Ito na. So the company cannot accept both projects. So parang ganito class, no? Since there's a limited resource, dahil nga konti, hindi naman unlimited yung pera mo. So we really have to apply the concept of uh, different methods of capital budgeting. Kasi nga, we have to... Uh, recommend to the management which project is more viable. So, kaya nandudun tayo as accountant. No? So, let's have problem number 14. Sige. Yung problem number 14, sabi kasi diba number 1, using net present value method, which alternative is more attractive? Ay given na kasi class yung net present value. Sabi dyan, 92,000 kay project 1 and 122,000 kay project 2. So therefore, parang titignan mo lang yung dalawang amount, dun ka sa mas mataas. Siyempre, net present value yung pinag-uusapan, mas mataas si, ha, si project 2. Kung ang pin, ang, guy, ang pinag-uusapan lang is net present value method. So, we can say that project 2 is more acceptable than project 1 based on the net present value. So, yun na yung sagot natin sa uh, requirement number 1. Now, paano ngayon pag yung sa requirement number 2? Requirement number 2 is profitability index. Sabi dyan, present value of cash inflows. So, Given naman, so 470 and 794. And then present value of cash outflows or the cost of investment. So that's 378,000 for project 1 and then 672,000 for project 2. Plus given yan ha, huwag palilito. And of course, uh, kunin lang natin yung Derive na natin yung formula. So, that's 1.24 for project 1. Paano na compute yun? 470,000 divided by 378 and then 794 divided by 672 for project 2 or 1.18. O ngayon, kung ito lang yung, kung dito tayo mag- uh, focus, we can say that project 1 is more uh, acceptable than project 2. No? So, because it's it, it has a profitability index of 1.24. Okay, so that's problem number 14. So problem number 15, actually, this is the internal rate of return naman. No? So the requirements are net present value using the company's desired rate of return. And then number two, uh, let's calculate for the internal rate of return. 
Piolo Company is investigating the purchase of special purpose washing machine for cleaning drapes. The machine would cost 350,000 freight and installation cost is 14,000. Piolo has estimated that the new machine would increase the company's after tax net cash inflows by 110,000 per year. The machine would have a five year useful life and no salvage value. The company desires a minimum return of 12% on invested capital. So, yan class, ha? Uh, let's have problem 15. In, in problem, oops. In problem 15, ang sinasabi lang na una mo natin computing dito is net present value. So, in net present value, sabi natin, uh, meron tayong net cash inflow of 110,000 multiplied by the present value factor of 3.605. So, that's 396,550. And less the investment of 364. Paano ba na-compute yung 364? So, that's the purchase price of 350 plus the freight and installation cost of 14,000. So we have now the net present value of 32,550. So okay na tayo dyan. Ngayon class, sabi, when the IRR is being used as the discount rate, uh, uh, ulitin natin, uh, Pag daw ang internal rate of return is used as discount rate, the present value of cash inflow is equal to the present value of the cash outflow. Eh, kung ganun, ang sinasabi niya, ang present value of cash inflow is equal to the present value of cash inflow or your investment. So therefore, your net present value is zero. Kasi nga equal eh. No? So imagine, Kung ang total present value of cash inflow mo is 100 at ang present value of cash inflow mo or investment is 100, so therefore, your net present value is zero. No? So, ganun na if it's the internal rate of return. Ngayon, paano natin compute yung internal rate of return? Simply by dividing 364,000 or the investment divide by the net cash inflow of 110,000 or simply 3.309. In class, kung 3.309 factor, nasaan ngayon yan? So we can say that the IRR is between 14 and 16% kasi uh, yan yung available na data sa atin. No? 3.309 Nandi dito yan in between 3.433 and 3.274. No? So it's between 14 and 16%. No? So that's how to compute for the internal rate of return. Kaya nga meron dito, meron dito parang nagka trial and error ka. No? So uh, that's how to compute IRR. Okay. That's problem 15. Next, we have the discounted cash flow rate of return. The rate of return which equates the present value of cash inflows to present value of cash outflows. Parang ano rin pala plus, no? Uh, parang yung IRR din. No? So, number one, determine the present value factor for the discounted cash flow rate of return. So, yun yung ginawa natin kanina. And then, number two, using table two, Find the line, the economic. Actually, that's uh, this is what we did uh, in discussion problem 15. No? Actually, na una pala yung problem 15 yung bago yung concept. No? So, we should have discussed this first before proceeding with problem 15. Uh, well, anyway, we have computed it. Uh, naman, no? So, discussion problem 16. 
determine the time-adjusted rate of return. So time-adjusted rate of return is simply your discount, discount and cash flow rate. So different terminology para lang at least uh, um, you'll be familiar with different uh, naming convention. No? So when you say time-adjusted rate of return, it's simply your discounted cash flow rate of return. If you all a company is evaluating a capital investment proposal, that will require an initial cash investment of 330,000. The project will have three year life. And the net after tax, cash, tax cash flows from the project are expected to be 200,000 in the first year, 150 in the second year, and 120 in the third year. No salvage value and straight line method will be used. Tax rate is 30% and the company's cost of capital is 18%. O class, uh, kanina, uniform ulit yung cash flow natin. This time, uneven cash flow. No? So, kung napapansin nyo, class, the way we approach it is we try to give as many problems as we can. No? Parang at least, alam mo kung paano yung approach no? to different type of problems. No? Kasi imagine, meron, nga, meron isang problem, even yung cash flows, no? meaning pare-parehas. And this time, uneven naman. So it varies uh, each year. So para at least uh, full yung concept talaga. No? So let's have problem 16. So in problem 16, tandaan ulit, dahil it's, this is an even cash flow. So therefore, what we are going to use is the present value of 1. So the cash flows are given. So we have 20. Actually, in the 20. That's 200,000, 150, and 120. Present value factor using 22%. Actually, it's not 22. It should be 18%. That's 0 0.82, 0 0.672. Tignan natin, no? Con if confirm natin doon sa table natin. Si 18%, ayun, 0 0.18%. 0 0.672 pang mali. 18. Dapat ito. 0 0.847. 0 0.718. And uh, finally, number 3. 0 0.0609. Kasi yung kanina nakuha ko is 22%. Ano yan? 0. 0.609. Right. So get the present value of cash inflows. So 200,000 multiplied by 0 0.847. What meron kang ngayon 169,400. 107,700. Then 73,080. That's the total present value of cash inflow, 350,180, less the cost of investment. The cost of investment is 330. So we have net present value of 20,180. Ngayon class, uh, dahil ang kailangan natin, di ba? Sabi natin, uh, pag kinukuha natin ng IRR, your present value equal the cost of investment. So therefore, the net present value is zero. No? So, ganun, di ba? So, kaya kailangan uh, mag-assume ta kaya ito yung, yung trial and error na sinasabi ko. No? So, uh, subukan natin at 23%. No? So, at 23%, ang rates are the rates are naku, hindi siya available dito. Sabihin na lang natin na uh, for example, there's a I have computed it earlier. No? So, for example, there, there are uh, available rates here. No? It's, it's 0 0.813, 0 0.661, and 0 0.537. No? So, ang, ang factors, I mean, the present value of cash inflow will total 326,190. So, magre-result siya for a net present value of negative 3810. 
eh di ba ang kailangan natin ma-achieve is 0%. I mean, is 0, no? So, pag sinubukan, yun nga, kaya magsasubok pa tayo ng ibang rate, no? So, therefore, we can conclude that the time in, uh, time adjusted rate of return is between uh, 23%. Ba't nga ba 23%? Pasagot nga. Eh, 18% to. Hindi ba dapat sumubok tayo ng ano ba to? 0.813. Kung 18 yan, subukan natin tong 0. Point, subukan natin tong 20%. Sige na, ha? Print screen. So, 18% Siyempre, kung 18%, meron kang net present value of 20,180. Eh, sabi nga natin, um, in time adjusted rate of return, kailangan daw ang net present value is zero. So, basically, kailangan lang natin itong maging zero. No? So, subukan natin yung uh, subukan natin yung 20%. It's 0. 0.813. Ayan. And 0.579. Okay. Di pa. Isa pa. Natin yung so 18 20. Subukan natin yung 22. 22 0.820 0.672 and 0.551. Yan. So, maliit na. Subok pa tayo ng, ano, ng iba pa. Magne-negative na yan. Pag kaya, kaya pala kanina ang ginamit natin is 0.23. Kaya ang, 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 ang sagot natin dito is the time adjusted rate of return is between 22 and 23 percent huh? so that's how to approach this type of problems okay so that's problem 16 let's now go to ito na, last concept no we have payback reciprocal payback reciprocal is a reasonable estimate of the discounted cash flow rate of return provided that the following conditions are met. So, class, ha? Uh, sabi, ang payback reciprocal daw is an estimate of IRR. Kasi, di ba, kanina, kung nampigot natin yung IRR, sabi natin that the present value of cash outflow versus cash inflow versus the present value of cash uh, outflow is equivalent to zero. So, yun daw yung IRR, ha? Eh, at the payback reciprocal naman is an indication or an estimate of IRR provided. Kailangan daw ma-meet muna tong conditions na to. So number one, the economic life of the project is at least twice the payback period and the net cash inflows are constant or meaning uniform. No? So let's have uh, payback reciprocal. No? Payback reciprocal naman is simply your net cash inflow over the investment or 1 minus 1 divided by the payback period. No? Okay, so let's have problem number 17. Okay. So, estimate the discounted cash flow rate of return without using present value factors. Ayan, ha? Hindi, ka mag, hindi, ka, hindi tayo gagamit ng present value factor. Piolo Company is planning to buy an equipment costing 500000 which has an estimated life of 20 years and is expected to produce after tax net cash inflows of 120000 per year. So, una, complete muna natin siyempre payback period. Eh, sabi natin, payback reciprocal is only applicable when we meet these two conditions. So, number one, economic life of the project is at least twice the payback period. 
number two, net cash inflows are constant. So ito, uh, computing natin yung payback period. So that's 500,000, yung initial investment, divide, divide by the net cash inflow. And sabi dito, uh, net cash inflow will be 120,000 per year. So ibig sabihin, constant siya or uniform. No? So that's 4.17 years. Tanong, is it twice the payback period or the economic life is at least twice the payback period? Eh, ang economic life mo nga dito, 20 years eh. So it's more than twice. No? So therefore, we can use payback reciprocal. So 1 over payback period. So 1 divided by 4.17. And the answer is 24%. So, tandaan lang class, in payback reciprocal, pwede mo lang gamitin to pag na-satisfy yung dalawang condition. So, it's really not, um, sabi natin na basic yung formula. Yes, it's true. But then, you have to make sure that we meet this condition no, prior to using this. No? Otherwise, it's not, uh, it will be, it will give you an incorrect answer. No? So, take note of that. So, that's payback reciprocal. And uh, problem 18. So problem 18, ito naman ha, tignan mo. Binigyan kita problem kanina with even cash flow or constant or uniform cash flow para at least ngayon malaman mo naman yung approach paano naman pag uneven. Okay? So we have problem number 18. So in problem number 18, parang invest natin to ginawa eh, no? so you have your cost of investment 480,000 sabi natin dahil nga to eh uneven ang ginagamit natin present value factor is present value of present value of present value of 1 so cash inflows given 248 240 and 200,000 so ito kunin mo ulit sa present value factor Multiply mo yung dalawa, so that's 225,432, 198,240, 150,200. Now, uh, we have the running total here. So simply, your parang cumulative, no? So 423, so that's 225,042 plus 198,240 or 423,672. Ngayon, um, meron ka ngayon sa year 3, 573,872. But remember, the cost of investment is only 480,000. So, paano natin ngayon kukumputin ko ulit yung proportion? So, 480,000 minus 423,672 divided by 150,200. 150,200 is the present value of cash info for year 3. Huh? Or simply, 56,328 divided by 150,200 or 0.38 uh, years. So, your payback, your payback period, discounted payback period is 2 years and 38 years. 2.38 years. No? So, that's yeah. That's the answer to problem 18. Ayun. Actually, that ends our discussion on capital budgeting. This has been your instructor, Mark Gibson. Thank you for learning with us. See you in our next discussion. Don't forget to like and subscribe. See ya!